in terms of mobility versus accessibility, um, as, you, as you can see to the figure to your left here, the greater um, accessibility that you can provide, provide can be found in, in residential neighborhoods, um, local areas, um, you can find in industrial areas or in smaller uh, townships or towns, uh, smaller jurisdictions. But once you move into bigger jurisdictions and bigger uh, residential uh, density in terms of land uses, you start getting into, okay, I need to, all of my local traffic is going to travel into a collector. So the primary purpose of the collector road is to be able to get all of the traffic from local roadways and disperse them into the overall bigger network, minor arterials, moving on to major arterials, to expressways, freeways, and so on and so forth. Uh, to your right is a very good, actually, uh, snap of how mobility versus accessibility works within a network. If we consider, for example, this to be a residential uh, neighborhood here, you would have the greater number of intersections, access density, spacing, and so on and so forth. When you move one into a collector, the spacing between intersections starts um, increasing. You'll have a more emphasis on mobility, but as well, there is a moderate emphasis on accessibility as well. When you get into minor arterials and major arterials, these actually collect all of your traffic flows to the bigger classification roadways. So from minor arterial all the way to major arterial and all the way to expressways. All right, so that is about tax roadway classification. However, the Ministry of Transportation itself does have its own classification. And actually, it may be a good idea to uh, go through the um, resource itself, the TAC excerpt, uh, excerpts. So I will be actually going over these. Um, you guys can see the uh, PDF. So this section, section 2.6, add of TAC, uh, I'm showing the resources here. Um, I'm going over the resources briefly with the intent of having you guys be able to know or identify where you can find the information. Um, you can do the detailed reading later on. I will do my best to keep our class timings between two hours to two hours and a half so that you have additional time later on to be able to review resources and extract information wherever you need. So that section is part of section two or part two, the design classifications. And basically you'll be able to find a little bit of an introduction, the purpose of the section, why it's needed, um, how tax classification works, and the uh, design classification coding uh, or name co naming conventions. So with ro rural roadways, the roadway source with R, and depending on the class of the highway or the roadway, it, if it's local, it's RL, Collector RC, Arterial RA, Express UED, that's a, a different one, but uh, it's because of the naming itself, um, Freeway RF. And within urban settings, the same classification applies. So the um, first subset is pretty much the um, design classification rule uh, reflects the uh, conditions or the uh, context. Is it rural or is it urban? The second letter uh, reflects the roadway classification. Um, and the last digits basically are the speed limit. If it's 50, that's uh, RLU50 for local roadways um, within rural settings, for instance. The same descriptions uh, being summarized, basically the more, the higher the class of the roadway, the higher the traffic volumes it carries, the uh, higher the flow characteristics in terms of, okay, I can ex be expecting more trucks. So basically the type of vehicles using the roadway, for example, if it's a local roadway accessing residential neighborhood, it's not likely going to be used by trucks. And that reflects design. However, if you're moving to uh, collector roadways uh, or um, highways, uh, freeways, uh, excuse me, you will be looking into, okay, my design vehicle is not is not a typical passenger vehicle or is not a delivery car uh, or a small delivery truck anymore. It can be, let's say, a WB21 uh, or a 20-meter-long uh, truck, for instance. 
So all of these influence the design uh, characteristics, especially when it comes into pavement, width of the roadways, speed limits, and so on and so forth. Operating speeds, something that goes in by default, the higher the mobility, the higher the operating speed, because that the higher purpose or emphasis is on the mobility pretty much once we move all the way to the higher classification roadways. Um, TAC also does give you a little bit of examples of with the likely connections by classification between roadways. So public lane can connect with the public lane, can likely you'll find it connecting with the local roadway, but not likely with the collector, and so on and so forth. So you can actually find this information here. As well, a little bit of the classifications within Google settings, what type of um, service function, uh, the land uses that are around the roadway. Uh, what's the, on average, the typical annual average daily traffic that is traversing that roadway? So within lo uh, local roadways, the expected is uh, less than 1,000 vehicles uh, per day, for instance, on average. When it, when it comes to collectors, 5,000, so on and so forth. The design, the flow characteristics, that it's interrupted or not, which defines the degree of uh, accessibility that you'd have design speeds and the average design, uh, sorry, an average running speeds the vehicle types used for design and normal connections in terms of other roadway classifications. You can find the same list of information on the next page, but within uh, urban settings. It's a much more detailed um, uh, table, but it, it, because of how things are uh, defined in urban settings, mainly we do care a lot about the difference between residential or non-residential uses. And that actually, um, you'll find um, characteristics per type, per roadway class um, for um, all local roadway settings. I'm oh, sorry, um, urban roadway settings. You can disregard the last page. That's uh, a scanning thing. So for any questions about navigating this section in TAC, again, you can uh, always find this resource in the uh, C-Learn, and you can find the full manual in, in the library. All right. So the Ministry of Ontario did actually uh, classify roadways based on tax classification. And um, you can find that in MTO's uh, access management guidelines. And these access management guidelines, you will always find these links right here um, in the notes section when you print out uh, your uh, slides. But MTO did actually uh, implement the same classification based on TAC and have all of the uh, roadways traversing or provincial roadways traversing the province uh, classified accordingly. MTO does have their own classification, which I'll dive into more, but that classification is a, a more detailed level of uh, tax classification. So you'll find two maps and the resources that you, uh, are in C-Learn, the functional classification in um, for South, Northern and Southern Ontario highways. You'll have Southern Ontario, the first page, and Northern Ontario, the second page. All right, so on top of in the tax classification for freeways, arterials, collectors, and locals, TAC also subclassifies freeways to either a freeway, a state freeway, principal arterials, arterials, and collector roadways only have the one classification. Lo uh, local roadways have two subclassifications. And the biggest difference between the classifications of different roadways is are these roadways fully controlled uh, in terms of access or are they not? So you'll find with NTO's classifications two acronyms, CAH and KH. And what CAH means, controlled access highway. And that means private access are restricted and spacing is going to be based, um, intersection spacing or roadway spacing uh, crossing the highway or the roadway is going to be based on the access management guidelines established by NTO. 
what Kings uh, KH means. It means it's an acronym for Kings Highway, and this is a type of highway that would allow more accessibility, uh, and private access are allowed to, to be connected to these roadways. And similar to tax classifications, MTO as well did implement the um, roadway classifications based on their um, classic or sub classifications of control of access or uh, King's Highway. So you'll be able to find two maps, again, uh, Northern and Southern Ontario, and you will be able to find the uh, different sub classifications uh, in the map. And we'll be going a little bit through what each one means because this is a little bit um, very, uh, this is actually one of the uh, things we experience in uh, uh, frequent times with working with NTO projects. So with freeways, um, access is provided only at grade separated interchange, and that's a full stop. No accesses or private connections are allowed to the roadway. These freeways are roadways that will become freeways in the future with an MTO's plan. Um, the access will be provided either by a future grade separated interchanges or actually at existing um, at grade intersections that will become future at grade uh, interchanges. So we can maintain the same access location. Principal arterial is the same thing, and it's, very, it's, it's a very controlled, the first three um, classifications are very controlled um, roadway classes in terms of uh, accesses. Um, the highest, the emphasis is highest on mobility. With arterial roadways, it's either two or four lane divided or undivided highways, uh, sorry, roadways with at grade intersections, but access will be provided based on the MTO permit control area, and we'll get into what that permit control area is. Um, and as well, access will be provided based on the spacing requirements that we will be discussing um, shortly. When we get to arterial roadway, there are two subclassifications. One, it is fully uh, control, uh, uh, controlled in terms of access. Access will be provided only through public roadway connections at approved locations, which are anticipated to become future grade separated interchanges or are at at grade public roadway intersections with a spacing that is uh, co consistent or that complies with MTO guidelines and all other access connections are prohibited. You cannot connect a local roadway to an arterial roadway and you cannot connect a private access connection or a commercial access. When the roadway is a King's Highway class, the access for developments or lands uh, Called typically subdivisions when, when you're um, having a development of huge um, lands, for instance, um, those are always from existing uh, public roadways or through a connection or an approved location that meets the spacing uh, guidelines of this manual or the of the uh, MTO access spacing guidelines. The spacing um, requirements for King's highways for arterials are lower than those for fully controlled access, uh, fully controlled uh, arterial roadways. When we jump into lower classifications of roadways, such as collectors, that's when we start seeing a, almost more or less a 50-50 split between mobility and accessibility. So there, there is a balance and the um, requirements for spacing requirements are a little bit more reduced as compared to arterial roadways and you're able to connect uh, through public roadways or through new public roadways that you can create um, as a new subdivision going on. Of course, you have to um, comply with the spacing requirements of NTO guidelines, access management guidelines. With major local roadways, the same approach applies, but now you can um, have private connections um, and the minimum spacing density and frontage requirements are um, will be considered, but you can deviate from them, especially when you get special cases that you, 